Welcome to Beer on the Brain, Episode 2, Your Lying Hydrometer. So we've all been there. You're trying to brew some high-strength beer, maybe a barley one, maybe a Belgian Dark Strong. You spend weeks formulating your recipe. You go through a long brew day where you spend hours boiling your wort to get up to that gravity that you want. You pitch a huge, healthy pitch of yeast after oxygenating the heck out of it. And you come back a few weeks later, take a hydrometer reading, and your gravity is way too high. It's five points or six points or ten points higher than where it should be. So you try and unstick your ferment. You maybe add some more yeast, you maybe rouse the yeast or aerate, add nutrient, those sorts of things to try and kickstart your fermentation. But no matter what you do, your hydrometer just won't budge. Well, you could cry into your beer, or you could accept the fact that it's not you. And in fact, your hydrometer is a liar. At least it is sometimes. So when we determine uh, alcohol content, we do it through a pretty simple method. We take our original gravity, subtract from that our final gravity, and then multiply that difference by a constant, 131.25. This is what most alcohol uh, calculators on the internet will do. This is what most um, brewing programs will do. And when you think about what you're doing here, you're multiplying your change in gravity by a constant to calculate your alcohol content. Which means, whether you realize it or not, that you're assuming the same change in gravity always produces the same amount of alcohol. And this isn't really true. So we all know if you take one cup of water and add to it a second cup of water, that you end up with two cups of water. But if you take one cup of water and add to that one cup of alcohol, you'll actually end up with a little bit less than one cup of water. Alcohol is weird. It actually concentrates or, or makes smaller uh, volumes of water. So what this means is your final gravity, when you have a high alcohol beer, is somewhat concentrated over what the calculators are assuming is actually there. So if we think of two beers, one of the low OG, one of the high OG, and both with the same unadjusted final gravity, meaning the final gravity would be the same in the way that that calculator is working. Well, our low gravity beer, of course, will have a certain volume. There's a certain amount of stuff dissolved in it, and it's that dissolved stuff that produces our final gravity, things like unfermented sugars. In the high gravity side, we, of course, have a volume of liquid. The same amount of stuff is dissolved in it, which means our unadjusted final gravity should be the same, but there's more alcohol in here. And as a consequence, that volume is actually a little bit smaller. There's a, a missing volume. And therefore, the amount of stuff is actually a little more concentrated. And so the final gravity that you read is higher than you would have otherwise predicted. So this is a graph uh, showing how alcohol shrinks uh, solutions of water. And I think you will appreciate that the effect is maximum somewhere around 40%, meaning that any beer over about 10% alcohol in volume will probably read a higher final gravity than what you would actually predict. So there is a better formula that accounts for some of these effects. It accounts for that concentrating effect as well as a few other uh, things that can alter the gravity of beer. And so what I have here are three beers that I recently brewed. In all of these cases, the original gravity, the starting gravity was measured by a refractometer. Final gravity is measured by a hydrometer. And I had a friend of mine run these through a gas chromatograph to accurately measure the actual amount of alcohol present. And I think what you'll notice is at the low gravity end, starting gravity of 1050, there really are no meaningful differences between either of the two formulas versus what uh, the machine actually measures in the beer. However, if we look at the medium and the higher gravity beers, you can start to see that there's larger differences where the classic formula usually used underestimates by two, sometimes three percent the amount of alcohol in solution, whereas the new formula uh, better recognize or better calculates um, what is actually there and is usually within about a half percent ABV of the true alcohol content. So remember, it's not always you. Sometimes it's your hydrometer. 